Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to continue our look at the surface features of the moon. We've gone over the mare and some of the major features, but today we want to get down to some of the more finer details, the mountain ranges and the craters. So instead of using my original videos that I've taken through my telescope, I think today we're going to go to a program called Stellarium which is a free planetarium program that you all can download and play with yourself. It's very good at finding fine details and being able to identify features on the surface of the moon. So I'll show you how to use that a little bit. In the meantime, let's cue up the music and get going. Okay, so we've pulled up the moon in Stellarium and zoomed in a little bit so that we can see the features. Let's go over what we've learned so far. Here's the north of the moon. This is the south. Over towards the Sea of Crisis, we have the east side of the moon. And by the basin of Grimaldi, we have the western side of the moon. The next thing that I'd like to go over is the bunny in the moon that we've talked about because a lot of people still ask questions about it. Let's go ahead and have a look and see the outline. Here's the bunny's back ear. There's the front ear. This is the top of his head. This is his snout. Here's his breast. This is his bottom and his legs underneath him. Here's his little bunny tail. And then here's his back. This is a very convenient way to remember the major seas of the moon. So we have the Sea of Crisis. We have the Sea of Fertility. The Sea of Nectar. The top of the bunny's head is the Sea of Tranquility. The snout is the Sea of Serenity. This is the Sea of Showers, and this is the Ocean of Storms. Now, there are some minor seas in here, the Sea of Clouds, the Sea of Vapors, the Sea of Islands, etc., and those were covered under the Western Seas of the Moon. You can go ahead and have a look at that video. I'll put a link to it in the description. But let's kind of concentrate on some of the more interesting features of the surface of the Moon. Now, when Galileo first turned a telescope on the moon, he noticed that it had mountain ranges. And these reminded him of the mountains of Europe. So that's what he named them for. These are the lunar Alps. This area in here is the lunar Caucasus. And these are the lunar Pyrenees. Now, some of the mountains here are three kilometers high. They're the size of Mount Everest. Now, the naming of the features of the moon and the craters involves not only science, but politics and intrigue as well. So when Father Grimaldi, who was a Jesuit priest, began to name these craters, he wanted to honor the people that laid the foundation for modern astronomy. So he named craters for Aristarchus, Kepler, Copernicus, but to please his bosses, he put them in the turbulent waters of the ocean of storms. Craters were named after deceased scientists. So we have Cassini and Tycho. There are approximately 30 large named craters. Now, when you have a large named crater such as Kepler, there are small craters around it that are named Kepler A, Kepler B, Kepler C, etc. And craters are further categorized based on their size and geographical features within them. For example, the smallest craters are cup-shaped and may only be a few meters across. The largest craters, such as Tycho, can be scores of miles across. The prototypical crater of this class, of course, is Tycho. You can see it's got step sides that have partially collapsed. It's got a flat bottom. And there is a central mountain which represents basically a splash of lava that came up in the middle and solidified. This is a very common feature in very large craters. Now, in addition to Stellarium, we can also look at Google Earth. Now, if we open up Google Earth, go to the menu bar, look at View, down to Explore, you see we can actually set it up to look at the moon itself. Now, the nice thing about Google Moon is if you zoom in, it will identify some of the major craters for you. Now, by doing a simple search, you can find a different type of a crater, and that is a crater named after a living person that was very noteworthy. Near the Apollo 11 landing site, 
you'll find the Aldrin, the Collins, and the Armstrong craters. Now, the other way that features are named on the moon is if you see it first, you get to name it. So since the Russians were the first to go around the far side of the moon, they saw a lot of new features over there. And one of them was this small sea. And that is now the Moscow Sea. Now, another thing that's rather common is that they will tend to group names together in one region of the moon. So for example, this oval-shaped crater right here is called Plato. This is in the lunar Alps. And right next door to Plato is Aristotle. Now, one thing that I'd like to make mention of, here in the Sea of Showers, you notice it's a rather round sea. The Sea of Showers was caused by an asteroid impact. And the force of that impact heaped up material around the rim. And that's the source of these lunar mountain ranges. Because the moon, unlike the Earth, does not have tectonic plates. There's no upheavals, which is the normal way we form mountains on Earth. All of the mountains on the moon are due to impacts of asteroids. Now, another thing that I would like to bring up, this dark area here is the Sea of Tranquility. The lighter area out here is the Sea of Showers. Notice that the rounding of the Sea of Showers seems to take a bite out of the Sea of Tranquility. That's because the Sea of Tranquility formed first from another asteroid impact, and then sometime later, a second asteroid formed the Sea of Showers. So this is a newer sea than the Sea of Tranquility. Now, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of some of the major mountain ranges and craters of the moon. There are approximately 30 large named craters on the near side of the moon, and these have satellite craters around them. Many of these are visible with binoculars or low-powered optics from Earth. So go ahead and get Stellarium and open up Google Earth, go to the moon, and see if you can identify some of these craters from your backyard using binoculars. This is a little project that I'm undertaking myself with my telescope. I want to get to know the lunar landscape. Why don't you learn it with me? So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by, and remember to hit a like and subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like, go over and check out my main channel, Bob the Science Guy. So until we see each other again, thank you for visiting, stay safe out there, and enjoy the night sky.